Our next video is going to look at population structure, and really it's, it becomes a, a collection of other indicators that we can look at to analyze population and population changes uh, throughout the world. Uh, most often these uh, population structure uh, or these indicators are going to be used by countries at, the, at, a, at that particular scale, but they could be used on a global scale, they could be used at a local scale, uh, you know, whether it's a state or even a local community, county, etc. But as a quick recap from the last video, natural increase rate is percentage of by which a population is growing per year. Uh, currently right now the world average is about 1.2% um, in the fastest place growing place in the world you're going to see it over 2%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that means that the population is going to double in a relatively short period of time, especially when you start looking at population growth over the course of human history. Second, uh, crude birth debt. Ugh. CBR, the crude birth rate, number of people that are born per thousand in any given uh, population. And then our crude death rate, the number of people that die per thousand. Uh, when we figure out the natural increase rate, it's basically just taking this crude birth rate, uh, subtracting the crude death rate, and uh, turning it into a basic percentage to determine our natural increase rate. So. With that in mind from the last video, uh, looking at the terms and concepts that you should take away for this one, total, for, uh, total fertility rate, uh, infant mortali mortality rate, uh, life expectancy, and dependency ratio. Uh, dependency, ra dependency ratio is something we talked about briefly in class when we looked at population pyramids. Um, you'll understand or recognize the concept, um, I think, when we get there. So starting with total for fertility rate oftentimes just recognizes the fertility rate, but the TFR is the number of children a woman would have during her childbearing years. Um, there's certain biological um, sort of time periods that women are able to, to uh, have children, um, and generally when we look at most cultural norms, when children are going to be, uh, when women will have families um, is going to fall within that 15 to 49 age group. Um, the total f world fertility rate is 2.7, but when we look that, at that range by country, it, it is a huge one. Um, there are certain places throughout the world that are much higher than 2.7. And if you look at some of the older, their aging populations that we talked about, the negative or declining um, population pyramids that we looked at in class, um, would oftentimes be under 2. Uh, or two or less. Um, and we could get into other factors as th that we not only talked about the social, the political, the economic factors that we looked at in class, um, but we'll continue to look at throughout the course. Again, looking at um, uh, a global representation or chloroplast map of total fertility rate, you can see um, the relatively high numbers in Africa compared to the rest of the world. Uh, and you can also look at other places like the Middle East, um, where you might have more male dominant societies. Um, or different cultural norms that are going to be seen relative to other places. Um, another example, or another uh, way to look at this is to look at population pyramids in the United States and then look at the developing countries, of, or the 72 most uh, lowest developing countries, and you see a distinct change in the fertility rate um, by percentage. You see that rapid growth model in the developing world, whereas in the United States we see that stable or more almost rectangular view of, of our population, which basically tells us that the fertility rate is low or lower because it's, it's simply um, replacing the or closer to the death rate that's happening um, or the, the, in terms of the number of children being born, um, and we can see it, it's, it's pretty stable. Infant mortality rate is another indication that geographers look at to look at the well-being of a population and the services and the conditions in which uh, children are being brought into this world. The infant mortality rate is the number of deaths that infants will, um, will be seen per thousand births in the first year of life. So, you know, obviously infants are incredibly fragile in those early stages of life and need oftentimes a, a very uh, deliberate and intensive care, uh, especially if, if any kind of illness or ailment um, is it happens, um, but if we look at this in terms of the births, uh, number of uh, deaths per thousand, we can see again some astonishing statistics. In places of conflict or in un most underdeveloped places in the world, um, we oftentimes will see uh, uh, infant mortality rates that are 100 and above. In other words, over 100 children in the f will die within the first year of life. Um, in some places, I've seen as high as 200 in in terms in times of conflict. But in other ways, we can see, look at places around the world like the United States. 
and our infant mortality isn't as low as other countries, um, and even some that we would say were far more developed. Um, and this gets into some other very difficult questions about who has access, what, what is the education level of, of some of the basic things of care, um, and some other factors that we could look at, some of which, some of which would be very, um, you know, that go outside just medical care. Uh, again, something that we'll come back to as we move through this course. If we look at life expectancy, the, th the next element of this video is just uh, something you're probably v more familiar than others, is just that how long can one expect to live um, uh, you know, at birth uh, given the current conditions of a, p a population and looking at the, the track records of the, the current population and seeing how long do people typically live um, right now if they're born in a particular country. And that can range from anywhere from 40 to, in Japan today, it's almost 86 years old for a female uh, being born today in Japan, whereas in places in Sub-Saharan Africa, in, in parts of the Middle East, especially a place like, uh, for example, uh, Afghanistan, we're seeing some incredibly low life expectancy figures. Again, looking at the, the region, we look at uh, um, uh, statistically, um, what our uh, particular um, uh, uh, rates are in, in, in relative comparison, um, we see some stark contrast as we move through the world. But one of the, the common themes you see is often where the more developed worlds are is going to be a, a contrasted where the lesser developed places are as well. So looking at our last piece here um, is the dependency ratio. Um, and this is looking, if we were to take our population pyramids, remember we divided them into thirds, um, and dependency rep the ratio is just a simply a more formal way of looking at the, the, the youth, the working class, and then the elderly. And the global figure that's used is anything, any children um, from 0 to 14 would be considered uh, dependent. Um, even though we often look at it as at more like 18 in the U.S., but the global standard is 14. And 15 to 64 would be the middle or the working class. And then the 65 and above would be the elderly, basically, again, going back to a dependency. And so the, num the higher the dependency ratio, the more of a, 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 a strain that puts on the resources to take care of not only the young, but also the old, as they are less able to produce and to, to care for themselves or to be productive in an economic way in a, in a given society. Um, so whether that's it's elderly care, um, whether it's um, uh, you know education, whether it's basic uh, uh, vaccinations, um, you can see some pretty stark contrast. That the dependency ratio in Africa is well over forty percent, uh, or I mean, uh, uh, yeah, of over forty percent. And what we're seeing with that is the fact that you have um, very high populations. Of, of young people that we're seeing rapid growth across um, many countries in Africa, whereas in other countries in, in the world we're not seeing as high of a dependency ratio, but it's because they're an aging um, population. And so when we start looking at um, the older countries of the world, we start to see um, uh, that contrast in the, in again, the wealthier parts. Western Europe is marked by a very aging population. Japan is a very aging population. We use that as an example in the population pyramid of a negative or declining growth. Italy is a very aging population. And when you talk about the United States, when you hear the baby boomers getting older, or, uh, you know, that we, we are, um, we are approaching a new era where we're seeing a, a, a higher dependency ratio in the United States as well, um, as the, the, the product of the baby boom generation after World War II. It begins to age and retire. So again, quick summary of total fertility rate, infant mortality rate, life expectancy, and dependency ratio. Uh, again, hopefully you've got some good notes at this point. If, if you bring your questions and clarification needs to class, and we'll address them there.